Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining our HDI class uh, with Sierra Sofitz. I'm uh, with Badiraj Kukarni. He's a senior PCD consultant at Oakwager office, uh, and he's going to present this HDI webinar. Badiraj? Hi, myself, Badiraj Kukarni. Welcome to the webinar on HDI technologies. And uh, I have more than 25 years of experience in manufacturing of the printed circuit board, printed circuit box. So in today's topic, uh, we are going to define what is meant by HDI and uh, what are the benefits of opting HDI compared to the traditional boards, then signal integrity, disciplines, then what type of technology we are adopting for HDI boards, then advantage of these micro via interconnections, then aspect ratio, the cost factor, then BGA fan out strategy, how to route, route the traces whenever there is a dense device is there, BGA, like BGA devices are there. Then we'll study the standard build ups. Then also we'll look into some of the uh, picture, uh, picture uh, presentation of the HDI PCBs. Okay, great. So what is meant by HDI? So it's nothing but higher wiring density board, right? So in, uh, when, it, when you compare to the conventional PCBs, so here the density is very high in terms of line and space. So you can now accommodate more traces into that and more interconnections. Then you can bring down the board thickness. So thereby it reduces the aspect ratio. So if you consider one by one, so when the lines and spaces are less than four mil, we term that as a HDR. If the wires are less than 150 microns, then the capture pad of the is less than 400 microns, so it is termed as HDI. The capture pad means where the laser is going to hit, so the top pad that is called as a capture pad. So it, it is less than 100 well, less than 400 microns. Then higher connection pad densities, so more than 20 pads per square centimeter. Then 120 to 160 average pins per square inch. I have a question. Yeah. Whenever it's HDI, mm -hmm. uh, does it always imply that you are going to drill with laser? Uh, no need. It can also be mechanical yeah, drilling? It, it can be mechanical also. It can be mechanical also because if it is only fine, very fine lines or uh, smaller wheels are also considered as uh, HDI. But uh, you know, having microwire gives you to reduce your uh, number of layer counts less. Uh, you, uh, it, uh, it reduces your aspect ratio, thereby the uh, reliability of the board gets increased. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. Uh, so the final lines, as I recall, I read somewhere like, uh, is it also uh, possible to have a, a deep micro, um, micrometer? So, is it uh, viable to have 50, 50 microns? It has to be greater than. Uh, no, no, it, it can be 50 also. There are different methods to achieve that. Not by traditional method. There are some uh, additive processes are there, semi additive processes are there. They, thereby, they have achieved the so internally you want like 50 microns. That's, that is 2 mil, right? So, you can achieve that. Can we proceed? Yeah. And this density, uh, uh, how the uh, how the uh, factor of this density is calculated? So there is a formula for that. Beta is uh, density. WD is equal to beta into square root of CD into CC. So where uh, CD is the parts per square inch, and uh, the CC is the average leads per part. So uh, and beta is the one which is uh, Factor, uh, it's a factor for calculation the density. So they normally choose like 2.5 for analog and discrete reasons, and 3 for analog and digital reasons, and 3.5 for digital and ASLC reasons. 
So, uh, is there any question on this? Yeah, so so basic question. How do you separate the analog region and digital region? No, they identify, see, it is just like, what is analog region? So, analog is a signal which is continuous, both in terms of uh, like a time and amplitude. It's a continuous in terms of time and amplitude. Whereas, discrete means one of the factory is not there. That means uh, if if uh, if the signal if the signal is discrete both in time and amplitude, that is called digital. But if it is discrete in only one term time, then it we term it as a discrete only reason, discrete reason. We do not call as a digital reason. So if it is discrete both in uh, time and amplitude, then it becomes digital. We can have a different suggestion for that because it's a big subject actually. So then we come to what are the benefits for opting the HDI? So better electrical performance and signal integrity. Why? Better electrical performance means what happens when you introduce micro wires, you have a lot of interconnections. So your traces become shorter. It, it, it need not go in a lengthy this thing. So the traces become short, thereby the electrical performance increases because of there is a less inductance and uh, capacitance. Strain. Yeah, strain inductance and capacitance gets reduced on that. So that is where, where and also it, because of these uh, smaller wires, you, you don't have the stubs. Normally in a regular uh, interconnections, what happens, uh, even though if your trace is uh, like any control impedance traces are there, you, uh, normally there is a mismatch of impedance between the interconnection and the trace. Because when we calculate impedances, we calculate only on the topography of the traces. But we never calculate the interconnection. That, that also acts as a trace only, right? From the top to bottom, it acts as a trace. In normal cases, what happens if, the, if you are drawing a connection from layer 2 or layer 3 and you are, there is no connection from say 3 to 10, then that area acts as a stub. So that gives you a lot of effect of this capacitance and uh, inductance yeah. effect. Thereby, EMI effect will be more electromagnetic uh, interference, uh, then there is one more factor called RFI, radio frequency interferences. So they uh, uh, they act on that uh, traces. That's why it is always better to go for HDI if you uh, have increased the electrical performances. Then nice cross star and lower EMI RFI, they, they are the characteristics of the signal actually characteristics of the signal. So if, uh, if you consider HDI, how these characteristics improve? We can study that like uh, if you say HDI, one, one of the HDI feature if you say is short interconnect lens. If you say short interconnect lens means signal quality improves, cross talk improves. These are the two qualities from that. And if you say low dielectric constant because we are selecting low dielectric constant for the low loss materials for high speed transmission of the lines. So the low dielectric means again signal quality improves and also crosstalk improves. And the smaller wires are smaller features, so signal quality improves there. Then wire in fact gives you that the switching noises. See normally these switching noises come out of this, not only switching noises, and uh, uh, switching noises come out from the ground planes. Uh, whatever the ground planes are there in the particular stack up, you get the, the noise level from there. So if you use the wire impacts, you reduce the switching noises. And fine lines and thin dielectric reduces the cross track as, as well as switching noises and also EMI effects. And uh, support for fine pitch components, switch noise, there is a switching noise uh, less and EMI effect will be lesser. So these, 
So uh, these are the HDA features which I described, which will affect like signal integrity, crosstalk, and switching noise or EMI. The, so then there is a cost optimization. How cost optimization is because the bill, the bill of material becomes lesser. In a normal like say around 18 layer board, what happens? The bill of material required is very high there, right? You require around uh, uh, nine cores, right? Then pre tracks and all those things. So that will get reduced. If it get it reduced to say eight layers, you are almost reducing by 30% of your BMI uh, bill of materials. Then reduced design time means what happens when we create a lot of micro vias, Okay, interconnect uh, for him uh, for the layout designer to route it becomes easy. So he has got many interconnections so that he can go the, uh, to the nearest one. And more uh, more reliable designs because more reliable means uh, performance wise, it will be more fun. then complex and dense devices. Uh, that uh, now uh, nowadays uh, the critical BGS like. Uh, 0.4 mm BGA having more than uh, 300 to 400 uh, inputs and outputs. So the tracing becomes very complicated. So thereby using our uh, these uh, technologies, we can trace and find out those uh, traces wherever it is required because it is very difficult to trace between the two paths. So we can go to the next level of layers and get connected. Then compact, we know the compact, the main purpose of this is compact PCBs, right? To reduce the size, because we need to uh, produce this PCB to the form factor of the device. Whatever the electronic gadget is there, so that form factor we need to look into that. So this, uh, this HDI technology gives you the advantage of reducing the sizes, reducing the miniaturization of the PCBs. I think we are, I just now explained the same thing, signal integrity discipline. So in this, what is the discipline? First is the right uh, selection of right material. So when we say right material means for what? For the high transmission, the high transmission uh, signals, high transmission signal speeds where the loss factor should be minimum. Then HDI provides. No, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what types of materials do you usually use for HDI? HDI, we normally use uh, higher PG materials, like uh, ranges from 180 to 200. Uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, low, low decay values and, uh, and also low decay values around 3.14 or like that. It is a dielectric constant. And also, if you say, if you want to say the material in terms like uh, our uh, FR408 uh, is the better material, and also like Megatron series materials or the Megatron 6 series materials, then some Nelco series materials are there. Okay. Then HDI provides signal integrity performance, then the non HDI because, the, because of the straight capacitance and inductance, which I have. Explain just now. So the above factors will result in higher speed signal transition, faster rise and fall time, and higher clock rate. This what this meaning is the transmission speed. So uh, the, the gain and uh, the gain factor or coming down. So it has to uh, and uh, reaching in time. So that I, uh, because of this, uh, when you use HDI and all, you can achieve those results. So, what are the technologies adopted for HDM? It's of them. We use uh, blind wires, micro wires, buried wires. So, uh, as shown in the picture, like through hole, blind, micro wire. This is the stacked one. So, usually, how do we nomenclature these HDI stackers? So, suppose it's an eight layer board. So if I, if I write like two plus four plus two, that two on the either side represents the num, uh, number of microwires. So uh, normally these microwires are 
symmetric in the stack up. So you are having two microwave on the top, then you should have two. It's a it's a sign of a good design. It's a sign of a good design. Always it should be symmetric. Why? But it it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory also. You you it is not mandatory also. Like we can have. Like ah, uh, you can have like two plus four plus zero. Oh, okay. You can that have like. Huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, but always this is the standard procedure that we do. Yeah, standard. Is there any specific reason? He, मतलब reason. Why we have this like symmetry? No, uh, why I'll tell you. Anyhow, you are uh, see when you create a stack up, uh, what happens? You are creating a microwave from top. Okay. Now, if you do not create, but you are doing all the processes. You are doing uh, the, that particular sub lamination. Okay, wherever the micro first microwave is there, so you are doing the sub lamination process. So you are when you are doing all the sub lamination. your cost will not get reduced if you don't add also so that is why if you add also there is no harm because it gives you advantage to route route your traces so that, so if you avoid like the 2 plus 4 plus 0 if you make it you are the number of uh, interconnection uh, tracing uh, or the tra whatever the routing is there of the traces you will have lesser uh, interconnection point so if you have to you have abundant uh, interconnections you can route as many as and also you can route very closely so that you can bring down the trace length you can bring down the total uh, size itself down see the main purpose of creating the wires is to have more interconnections so if you are created on top and you are left on the bottom means it, it does not look a good design you are not considered your points Be because already when you introduce your uh, microwave on one side the process remains same for us no question so with the increase in uh, number of microwaves uh, the signal integrity improves or uh, just like for uh, just because we want to no, have it, more compact uh, pcb see, they are doing it. yeah yes good very good point this is very good point you know the signal integrity is directly related with the trace length okay so the more microwaves you have more connection more shorter connections more shorter connections so that's why we, we define uh, if it is only uh, there is one specific uh, case will also come where in which how do you term this shorter length okay so more than then more than the more than that specified length then we term that as a control impedance if it is a shorter length we need not assign it as a control impedance okay so the more, the more the length you have to introduce all these parameters like control impedance everything emi rfi all effect will come into picture the shorter no issues that's why having more interconnections is better and improves the performance of the signal integrity four so what is four here it is number of inner layers between the micro you understood right the number of layers between the between two microwaves if it is a 10 layer board now here it is 2 plus 2 plus 6b is there that means all these internal layers are buried layers six layers are buried layers like two o microwaves on bottom two on the bottom and all the six layers are buried layers we can see the picture in the presentation also here It's simple. Now here we have defined it more uh, clearly. You can see there is a buried is there. Then there is a number of layers between the microwaves is there. Then microwaves. So this is defined like two plus four into six b plus two. So we know now we from the picture two microwaves on the top and two microwaves on the bottom. so there is a 6b is the so all the six these six layers are buried connection but 
why this four is there means between these microvias there are four layers are there this is the complete uh, the, uh, definition of a uh, uh, hdi advantage option for component layout with the smallest bga that's what we discussed miniaturization with the via via in pad technology then cost effective generation of high varying density future proof technology because in the future components are all uh, very small components only so there is very small pitch is there high reliability and reduction in inductance and capacitance we have we have studied in just now right this was high reliability is again because of the so, uh, yes. short connection yes. short short the, the main fund of this hdi is shorter length microwires we has shorter length we has shorter traces and then miniaturization and with these are technologies of the uh, interconnection again this via in pad and all how does via in pad help in uh, sti no via in pad is only meant for routing the when, when it is a critical bga is there we normally use in bga this via in pad we don't use in all other areas if it, it is comes also uh, there is a uh, it's uh, just a connection from second layer to the top layer but uh, second layer or third layer to the top layer but in case of bga in case of bga what happens we are unable to route these uh, traces there so we can use the via in technology to get those connections to the next layer or to the next layer because they will vary if you say 0.4 mm bga it's very you, you, you cannot pass one trace between the two pads that is it so it is all uh, so this helps for fan out fan out circuits then the more important is the aspect ratio of the laser drilled microwires so if you look at the picture first understand what the laser drill capture pad that is the target target uh, where the laser comes and hits then there is a b is the drill diameter of the laser microwire c is the thickness of the dielectric that is nothing but the length and laser drill target pad at the bottom d so normally the laser ratio is calculated c bar b is to 1 what is c it is length of the laser drill that travels b is what b is the diameter right so normally the, this is uh, like one uh, it, it should be like one is to one so like if you have a 4 mil length you can a 4 mil laser diameter you can go to 4 mil length 6 mil laser diameter you can go to 6 mil length okay but the optimum results are obtained at 0.75 is to 1 why no because see the uh, otherwise there, there will be issues with respect to this connectivity uh, like plating uh, there, there there might be a, like wires there will be pin holes all those things issues will come so it is all related with the uh, not with, with the laser uh, capability it is nothing to do with the laser capability it is everything is with respect to the plating of the plating and also not only plating if there is a filling is there shed plating is there shed is there so you have to fill and uh, fill that entire microwire so in that time so you have good results and you get a good filling uh, results when it is 0.75 so normally we we prefer normally it is better to use 4 mil drill with 3 mil uh, length of the dielectric with an aspect ratio of 0.75 so 
So this is a picture of a one plus four plus one structure with microvias on top and bottom. So this is a single lamination cycle, right? So single lamination cycle with a via structure of like one twenty five microns means what? Six mil. So six mil laser drill is there. Pad is around three twenty five. That is the capture pad, and uh, the dielectric length ranges from eighty five to one hundred and ten. So this is the, the, this aspect ratio is going up to what? Around point eight. It is this aspect ratio is around point eight. So this is a single lamination and uh, electroplated. <laughs> this is a staggered microvias two plus four plus six v plus two. So six v is our buried structure. This is uh, then <coughs> there is a microvia between two to three, one to two. Then eight to seven, seven to six. Oh wait, uh, what's the advantage for having staggered microvias? Staggered microvias, you know what happens? The, the advantage you should uh, you uh, it is nothing but a microvias only. But only thing is staggered micro. There is a advantage from st staggered wires to stacked wires. You should compare like that. Not. Uh, Staggered wires means what happens? You don't require filling operation. So it reduces the filling operation of like a copper fill. We have see this copper fill. We cannot do it on our regular pattern plating line. Regular power plating line we cannot do. When you do the laser drill, you do the plating, copper plating, right? Electrolyzed copper. After that, you are doing the uh, uh, copper plating. Once you do the copper plating, you have to take it to the uh, separate tank where in which you uh, you have to fill with a different chemistry. The copper needs to be filled, so that extra process can be avoided. If it is a staggered wire, that process is compulsory. If it is a staggered wire, no need to fill that uh, whatever the resin fill is there. That should be okay. Whatever the resin fill from the pre-preg which is flowing into that hole is there. That is enough. So that is the main advantage of uh, staggered wire. Always prefer to have staggered wires rather than stacked wires. So we are not studying stacked wires is one over the other, right? So sometimes stacked wires we create when there is an aspect ratio of between one. They, if there is a con uh, connection from one to three is there, you are not able to achieve because of the aspect ratio. Then we do, we connect two to three, then one to two, one over the other. So that's how the staggered wires are formed. This is staggered. Uh, in my in next picture, okay. Next pictures I will show you the uh, slides. I will show you the stacker also. So six B is buried structure. Whatever the advantage is there, uh, and but there is a uh, uh, discipline is there for creating staggered wires also. That means the The, from the center of one uh, wire to the other wire, there should be. Uh, uh, it is always the gap should be more than the laser drill diameter between the two uh, axes of the center axis of the two. Understood? I will explain that one. There is a non-conductive wire filling is there for like sub assemblies when we do sub assemblies of like buried structures and all. We fill with the non-conductives, so that process is simple. So once drilling is done, we are metallizing that portion. Once the metallization is done, we are filling with the non-conductive epoxy paste. Then we are curing it. Then we are polishing and we are doing the planarization of leveling it. And once again, this the purpose of doing this is we can recover the land whatever we have lost again. So that you can create a wire pad structure over this. So this may uh, process helps you to regain the once you have established your connectivity between that sub assembly, the same the area lost can be recovered, and also you can create any copper features whatever you want on the top of this particular region. 
see there is a staggered wire so i was just telling you this uh, how it should be it should be like more than 300 microns that what is telling more than or equal to 300 microns is for better this thing but our simple thumb rule is it should be more than the laser diameter that is a uh, good enough then uh, uh, this is like three micro wires on top and three micro wires on bottom there is a six layer buried connection and four layers are interconnected between the uh, sorry four internal layers between the micro wires stagger hard ah, well, then there is also one rule is there like uh, uh, when you are staggering the wires so if there are buried structures are there like mechanical drilled buried structures are there then what should be the pitch there so you can see the pitch should be around 400 microns whenever there is a mechanical drill buried structure is there to the micro wire that pitch should be more than 400 micron between the two staggered wire more more than 300 or equal to 300 is okay and between a buried structure a mechanical drill buried structure sub assembly to the micro wire it should be more than 400 Is there a specific reason? Yeah, there are specific reasons are there. I think we should take a different uh, session for that actually. This is stacked wire. One over the other, like three plus four, six B plus three, same like ten layer, right? It's a ten layer board. So six buried, four internal layers. Three micro wires on top and three micro wires on the bottom. So how many is the lamination cycle? This is four. It's a three lamination three cycle. Lamination. Three lamination cycle. this buried this buried structure is one lamination cycle and along with this this micro wire gets drilled then for this micro wire there is a one more lamination and for this one more lamination Finally. so the cost factors if you say like one 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 press two press three press means two la one lamination two lamination three lamination cycle this is all or different combination of the structures for a given eight layer board so where in which the number of lamination cycle increases your cost increases what's the maximum number of laminations you can have some people actually it's preferred to do limit to the true layer to uh, two laminations only that's what the recommendation is there but some uh, three lamination if it is compulsory we have to do it but we, uh, in uh, i have seen uh, around five lamination's also people have doing so five lamination they are doing like some of the top industries they are doing it then bga strategy or bga fan out so oh, this is a more of a layer designer job uh, not to the manufacturer actually so here in which it depends upon the uh, uh, the type of device what is selecting not only the device uh, because the device can have 300 400 pins like that but uh, it depends on how many ios are active if he is using only 100 150 ios then uh, it will not be much difficult to pay Uh, round those traces, but when he when when it is used more than eighty percent of the pins, then it becomes uh, very critical for uh, routing those traces. So how do, how you connect uh, from uh, like so here in this simple case, you can see that the blue colors are connected to the top layer. The this is the second layer and the third layer is connected to third layer. That's how they are done. Uh, for this uh, i think we should have we should uh, interact with the designer more to understand uh, how exactly we can have a plan for like 0.4 mm bga 0.8 mm bga 
So how if these many corrections are there, how tracing is done, how routing is done, I think we can study. We sit with the designer and study these fanouts. And these fanouts, what what all the technologies these fanouts can use is like mechanical vias, right? We can use them uh, to connect those things. We can use like this dog bone shaped mechanical vias. Then he can use these micro vias like fan out like this. So you get a lot of space there, right? Even the density of the pad is more. See, compared to the mechanical here, density of the pad is more. Still, you are getting more kind of spacing. Then you can use this wire impact technology. So using all these th all these th th three technologies, micro wires, so micro wires, then wire impact, then mechanical wires, wherever it is required. So we can rope those traces. Uh, what's uh, the best fan out strategy? Is our best one? Is our best practice? Something no, like all the, all these three, uh, three, three, uh, three technologies are used. In, uh, if it is a critical uh, BG, if, if what we say is 0.4 mm BG is a critical one. We use almost all these three technologies there. There is a micro wire, there is a wire in pad, some mechanical wires are also there. Sometimes it is absent, mechanical wires can be absent. Your mechanical wires are predominantly present in like 0.8. MMBG and all, but uh, when you go to point four, this mechanical bias almost gets eliminated. It is only micro bias, then this uh, wire impact. Now we let us see some of the buildups, complete buildups. Uh, so there we have only shown the picture of that. Here how the stack up is created, you can see here. What is this construction like 3 plus 4b plus 3? So, can any, anybody explain me this one? 3 micro wires on either side. Yes, 3 micro wires on either side. Yeah. And uh, there is a buried between 4 to, you can see this layer, like yes. 4 to 7, there is a buried. So, in this construction, what he has used is, what is this core? He has used only one core first, right? So you started with 0.51 core, 0.5 mm core. Then you added three track and file construction done. Then this buried connection is established. After that, again, additional three tracks we have added. Then copper file, we have created this uh, third uh, uh, the microwave between three to four and eight to seven. Again, addition of three track and copper file. So this is like a sequential, right? So sequential build up, three sequential build up. So the micro bias is nothing but it's a number of sequential build ups. So three build ups are there. So the file, normally they start with a very, very less file. Sometimes it depends on the trace width actually. If the traces are like uh, less than 3, 3 mil and all, then it is okay to start with 12 microns. If it is less than 3 mil, you have to go with the like 9, 9 microns. If still lesser, people use 3 microns also. 3 microns start a uh, copper fine they use. And uh, the, the number one of these free price. So these are all high con high resin content free price here, 1080. Say so one ply, one ply. So between the microwaves, you can use one ply. But whenever this type of structures are there, it is better to have two plies there. But normally, prefer preferably, you should have two plies. So the what is the bore thickness here? If you calculate all that, sorry, it is coming to. Yeah. 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 Ah. Sorry, this one is not going. This 
No, we want to come below the stack up. It's okay. So this is a this uh, this board uh, thickness is around like uh, 60 mil. Board thickness is around 60 mil. You can calculate that. See, these are you can add up all these. You can add up this pre uh, pressure thickness, this final thickness has written. So one we here in the microns, if you add up all that, you will get the total board thickness. Oh, okay. Now the one more is here. See, it is it is very simple. Ten buried one microwave on the other side. It is also how many uh, sixty-two mil board thickness. Here we saw here this file is starting with nine microns. That that's why it depends upon the trace width of that particular region. Is there any question on these stack ups? No. Then the picture uh, you can see here, there are some HDI PCBs in the showcase. This is an 8 layer HDI with 0.4 mm BGA. Whenever HDI we say, then the number of layer count comes down only. It is not like that. So, so probably if, we, if the same design, in, in a normal case, would have been like a 14 layer board. Okay, now it has been brought down to the 8 layer board. So, with the thickness of C, you can see the thickness how much it is there almost 47 mils. 47 mils. So, the construction is 2 plus 4 plus 2, and there are stacked microbias L1, L2, L2, L3, L6, L7, and L7 LH. Buried L, which is between L3 and L6. And that's control impedance. Control so impedance. Whenever you have a GTI, do you always have control impedance as well? Yes, it will be there. It is not like that. Whenever the, there are some shorter length traces, we need not uh, assign it as a control. That is the that is the responsibility of a designer to take care of it. So, uh, but whenever the length, some uh, some traces will be uh, length is more, and those uh, traces will be termed as a control impedance traces. So that, that it depends on that particular trace, like whether it is a single ended or a differential. So all the uh, there is a strip line. So it depends upon the nature of the trace. So they assign these control impedances. Here it's a 20 layer board. You can see here blind on some both sides. Wiring pad is there for this. L1 to L3, L13 to the microwave as between L1 and L2, L19 and L20. Blind wire, microwave. 32 impedance layer traces are there in this single and differential. Is it a lot? Lot, very lot. Very lot. Then these are like a rigid flex PCBs, like six rigid. On, on either side and two flex layers with a line width of 4 mil, 62 mil, with some medical applications. Here also 3R, three, three 2F, 3R, 5 mil lines. Thickness is around only 40 mil. Application, this is industrial. These, uh, these are very high aspect ratio boards, you can see there. So even after doing, introducing the, the, this thing, this high aspect ratio, like 34 layer ATE boards. These ATE boards can go up to 40, 45 layers also. The, why, why, what is this ATE boards means? These are automatic test equipments. Uh, we know uh, yeah, this, uh, IPs are there, right? Intellectual properties of particular reason. So whenever any company designs those IPs and for a specific program, and that IP has to be tested. So to test those uh, this thing, you need the, these uh, boards. So it is around. It's a special material called is thousand. Is thousand two aspect ratio is here eighteen is to one. 
So if you want to know more about this, please uh, uh, refer our SDI uh, technology uh, um, design guide, so which is available on our website also, www.protoexpress.com. Thank you very much. And the design guide is on Sierra Circuit's website and also on the blog. Yeah. And you can download it here at this uh, address. So if you have more questions, you can send an email to Vadiraj, yes, right? And yes. You will reply. And if you have also more questions about Sierra Circuits, you can just send an email to Amigol, or Director of Sales and Marketing. And you can also find him on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for attending and thank you for the <laughs>